Hello Forge Ones, I'm going on there with the Backstreet Generals and a quick update. Uh, so we haven't really been putting out too much recently and that was kind of due to uh, getting tested for COVID and all this other stuff. Turns out it was probably just the regular flu, but we are getting back into the swing of things here. And we're coming back at you with a battle replay here today. All right, this one was sent in by Hermes, which I think is on the attacker side. Or at least I would assume so. I'm not sure which one he is. But we're going to go ahead and take a look at the army comps here. And I'm going to take a sip of this coffee because I'm just waking up. Mmm, that's good. All right, so... We've got Nervii here, and obviously they uh, picked Nervii for the Gorilla Deploy Towers and Siege Equipment here. Uh, Going to be taking out the uh, Siege Equipment that's on the walls here real quick. I don't even know why these guys are putting their Siege Equipment over here, but they are. Alright, and let's see what else we got going on here. Celtic Warriors, just seems like a ton of Celtic Warriors. That is quite a bit, and then a bunch of Ulsworn. They are kind of lacking in numbers though, but they seem to have uh, dumped in a lot for the Old Sworn. And let's see, we've also got Boya here, two really heavy melee factions, more Celtic warriors, and let's see what else we got. Probably more Old Sworn. No, sword followers. Okay, that's what I thought. Actually, yeah, there they go. Some more Old Sworn there too. Celtic bowmen and. Just a lot of Celtic warriors, jeez. <laughs> I feel like they should have more sword followers than Celtic warriors and just gone a little bit light on the uh, Old Sworn there. I'm not a huge fan of this build, but because uh, I mean, like, you already have Nervii going heavy, heavy on the Old Sworn, so why not just, just grab as many sword followers as you can since you already have those elite troops? That's That's my opinion on that anyways. But obviously, I'm going to assume that the attackers are probably going to be the winners here. Either that or it's going to be really close. Um, we'll have to see, though. Hillman and Silver Shield. Yeah, they're going... See, I like this army a lot better than the other two, actually. It seems a little bit more mixed, but maybe it's smaller as well. I, I, I haven't really counted it out. Uh, doesn't look like anybody really went any cav. What do we got for generals? Oh, sworn, oh, sworn. And, nope, no cav. They've got this whole corner completely locked down. You don't see too many attacks on this side. Um, a lot of the time, you'll see the attacks coming from this side. This might be a better option in the uh, long run here for the attackers, is from what I can tell, anyways. Because uh, I have been playing a lot on this side recently uh, due to this being one of the tournament. Uh, maps coming up here. Mm, definitely need that coffee. So match started already. It looks like they put up a unit on the wall. Uh, a lot of the time this will tank some of that uh, arrow fire, but a lot of the time if you're going to do that you need to block them up right here, but looks like they're going to be getting shot from the back side here uh, pretty easily. And this artillery piece should already be down. Down to two guys. This one, on the other hand, not taking as many losses. It might actually stick around. Might be a good idea to turn that artillery piece. Got some club lovey up on the wall on this side. And they're pushing up those hillmen. Take out the uh, wall section here. Better get these uh, Egyptian infantry off the wall at that point. And they are pushing up with the Celtic Bowmen. Kind of a weird choice, especially since there is a gate right here. They, they could easily sally out with some cav through this opening here. Maybe they don't know about that, or just uh, aren't, aren't really too worried about it. Risky play here. Really risky. And they are pushing up the... Thorax Swordsman is going to be the first wave going in. Probably the best choice to go in with the Thorax Swords first since they have the most armor uh, out of everybody here except for maybe the Sword Followers, but the Sword Followers are more of a, a killing unit anyway, so you really want to throw in your uh, tankier but decent units first. So good plays on them so far. Celtic Warriors pushing up the Tortoises. I think this is a terrible choice here in my opinion. I would definitely not be doing that. Uh, they do have to really be careful about knocking down sections of wall at the same time here. Um, so if they do, they could easily glitch out their tortoises. Uh, 
Actually, I haven't seen too any screenshots of this before, so I'm gonna kind of. Something like that. You don't see too much of uh, like the structures and whatnot in screenshots. You just see the uh the units super zoomed in. Oh, that's not the right button. There we go. And what do we got for the defenders here on the inside now that we've gotten in a little bit? Club Levy, some Desert Cohort, Desert Cohort, Desert Cohort, Club Levy, more Desert Cohort. So I, I really like Massilia's build so far. Uh, Desert Cohort are one of the harder counters to fighting something like Boyai with the Sword Followers or something even with Oshorn or Tribal Warriors, even for Tylus. Um, mainly because you look at this, this unit and that melee defense, 60 and 47 melee attack. 35 weapon damage, it's much better than taking the Desert Legionaries. Just maxing out the Desert Cohort is a million times better. Although he did pick up some Desert Legionaries, I personally tend to go for a pure Desert Cohort and then mix in, uh, for the 20 stack, mix in some lower tier units. Um, like the 340 Gorilla Deploy Troops that they can get. I don't know. Let's see. I don't know if I'd be sticking these in the first wave, though. These I would definitely probably be sticking more of Egypt's units up over here. Although, they do have Testudo Formation using that very nicely here. Uh, getting that right away. They lost a couple of Swaby's units here. Some of the Club Levy off on the walls. Gonna be pushing up their... Oof, risky play, bud. Risky play. You got Cretan Archer sitting back here. And he's taking damage from the arrow tower. I don't know what his idea here is. That is not good. Yeah, there you go. Getting shot with a volley there. You are just throwing this archer unit away at this point. That that angle, he really he needs to push it up further if he's going to avoid arrow fire. But uh, decides to pull back. At this point, it's, it's either you push up here or... You try to run away and take a lot of losses. I would probably just push up here at this point, dude. You're already past that. No. I mean, he is moving. He's not going to take a lot of losses, but he's going to take some. They could have also uh, hit the uh, rewind ability, or uh, what is it called? I wrote the term is quick reload. Yeah, quick reload. They could have hit that and shot another volley in that direction. Uh, getting some good shots on these club levy, although still don't know if I'd be shooting into the face of the club levy because the club levy, for their armor value, the highest thing that they have is their shield value. So they, they could block a fair, fair number of those arrows if you're going to be shooting right in their face like that. Granted, I do it myself. Uh, oftentimes, you're not going to be able to use your full ammo anyways if you don't take some of those uh Crappy shots, oof, pushing up his legionaries, getting them kind of in a terrible situation. Boxed in here, what's going on, bud? Ugh, ugly. Unless he's trying to get those side shots in, that might be his goal here. Then he is also getting hit in the side as well, uh, and in the back from Pila. There he goes, charging into this unit, going to be able to get some back shots in this Celtic warrior here. And he does have a second archer here, he could just be pummeling. Uh, this side with even more, and they've taken out this whole section of wall now. Desert Cohort, the only thing standing in the way there right now. Longbow Hunters sitting on the side here. Kind of a weird choice seeing the Longbow Hunters, 125 range. And they're going to be pushing up another Tortoise to take out another section of wall. I'm wondering if they can destroy this whole section here, or if it'll just be able to destroy the sliver here. And let's see what we've got. 67, 70 kills on that uh, Desert Legionary there. Not too bad. Not too bad at all, actually, uh, for something that's surrounded like that. Plus, they're getting all those kills with that Archer Unit 80 already. And killing off those Celtic Warriors, very nice. Very nice on their end. Uh, Going to be getting some Celtic Warriors up on the wall here. Maybe even get some Pila down warding off these Archers. Nice play there. Doesn't even have to mount them up. Just get them there. Now the Archers have to back up. Could even move this 
here and really force those archers back into this position here. Now, did the attackers take any artillery? I don't think so. Uh, Seleucid is kind of sitting back with his archers, which I think is a terrible, terrible choice. If the defenders had any cav right now, your archers are free game. They are sitting in the far back of the map, no support. Um, if these guys kept pushing up, I guess they just stopped. I, you really need to be pushing up as a unit. Not a huge fan of what's going on here. And not a huge fan of this either, but there is no artillery left to really contend with. So there's, they're, they're, they're clear. They're, here's the other artillery piece. This must be the third one that they took, which is a scorpion. Uh, I am a huge fan of taking scorpions, but I tend not to use them early in the game. Although, um, if he does just leave it right here, he gets some really good side shots in, in this direction, especially holding this point here with all these cohort. Very nice plays here. Uh, I do like the positionings on kind of both teams right now, although the archer play, I still, I'm still i still not a huge fan of uh, what's going on with the archers or the attackers. All right, he's throwing in his Celtics. I don't know if I'd be doing that. Those depleted Celtics? Mm. Army loss is right there, bud. Army loss is right there. Really don't want to be doing that. And the Hellman, probably trying to get those Pila off. I don't think I'd be sacrificing those either, uh, especially since I would assume, yep, there is a general right here, uh, easily able to hit that with second wind. No reason to be throwing these Hellmen away unless... You're trying to get their peel off, and if you've already gotten their peel off, you might as well pull them out. No, no reason to be throwing away a unit that can come in late in the game. Could just be holding them in place, though, to get some side shots with the other Hillman. Not a bad play there. Now, are these ones still full of ammo? No. Could get a side charge in here, kind of get some of these units out of position. Although he could easily just push this unit up and uh, kill off that Hellman and then pull it back later on. Oof, getting this wall down over here, not killing any of the club levy, but uh, could have been could have been really dangerous for them. Looks like the this tower, their this tortoise must have glitched out on them, and I think that might have been because there was another one next to it. I'm not sure. But it, it really, it could have easily been that. They're going to be shooting up at this wall at these uh, Cambry Bowmen. That's going to waste a lot of ammo. Uh, unless they're targeting the ones down here. But uh, these Cambry Bowmen will probably actually win this exchange. Just because they do have the wall and they do have the support from below. Uh, so they're really warding off any archers advancing on this flank. Very nicely done on Swaby's part. The Hillmen are starting to die now. I would definitely not be just throwing... This one in at this point uh, does look like he picked up quite a few kills off of a desert cohort with just Hillman. That's the warriors over here. We've got some more Celtic warriors on this side. So the archer fight on this side, I think uh, Egypt should win, hands down, so long as he just kind of holds his position. But it looks like he's going to be pulling back already. Um, really could just stick another unit up on the wall. And now that he has time to um, and just hold this position, that way they can't advance any archers on this flank. If they allow them to do that, they're going to get some side shots and really try to force their way in through this side. Hundred and thirty-one kills on that desert cohort. Granted, it was all <clears throat> on Hillman, so it really it doesn't amount to much. You got some Celtic warriors coming in here, and since Cilia, I don't know if they took any slingers. They might not have gone for ranged at all. Uh, that's going to be a real big hindrance here. It would have been really nice to see them take some. And if they do have some, they definitely should have them uh, closer to the front here uh, to take out some of these Celtic warriors, because they're not going to be winning any exchanges. They're just allowing... Uh, Oi and Nervii here to just throw in Celtics rather than throw in their higher tier units against these cohort. Oof, and still throwing in those Hillmen. Very bad plays with the Hillmen. I do have to say, I'm not a huge fan. I very much dislike that. 
he's just kind of throwing those away. Like, very good plays on the Pila part, Pila side. Great plays with the Pila, but terrible plays with once with them once they're out of him. There's no reason to be just throwing them away like that. <clears throat> What do we got back here? The Hillman re uh route or the reforming here. And we've got some Celtics just kinda of sitting in the back. Must have just missed that unit back there. And they are cycling in and out. They've got a winded unit here, pulling him out, throwing the Celtic Warriors in. Now they must be going for the charge bonus by doing that. Um oftentimes in my in when I play, I'd rather have the unit that I'm pulling out not route. Uh, so I'd rather not even get the charge bonus off and just fight into the melee combat and make sure the other unit doesn't route. So I'll make sure the other unit is already engaged in combat before I pull the next one out so it doesn't route. Because oftentimes when you do that and you pull a unit out, it will just flat out route uh, if you don't have a unit engaged with the unit behind it. Looks like they are taking out some of these Celtics. I... Oof. Risky plays, in my opinion. Uh, throwing... The rest of your ammo at this. I mean, it's not a bad choice to do this, but if you do use up all your ammo on these two archers, you're gonna have a hard time. They're they're really gonna be able to just inch their archers in on this side, like I said before, and really push for this this flank here and get in. Um, granted, there's really only a couple spots they could fire from, which they kind of blocked off with their own uh, siege towers here. Club Levy taking on some Celtic Warriors. Looks like they're doing a good job. Looks like they're going to be firing up at the wall. I don't know if I'd be doing that either. The Club Levy, I think, will end up winning that fight if you just leave them alone. Looks like Massilia did take some range units, but he took Tribesmen. I think Tribesmen are the jav units, so they're really going for some armor pen here. Uh, maybe that's why they're trying to fight so much at this front line. These are for the late game when they want to take out those uh, Oathsworn or something like that with the Tribesmen. Not a bad choice there. Although, they're really going to have to bank on the enemy uh, running out of arrow fire at that point. Oh, here we go. Hopefully, he still has 185 kills. That can't be a lot of ammo. How much? Still got his bows out. Come on, bud. Great archers, Nubian bowmen. They're marching right up on you. He, the reaction, I think, was too slow, and they really can only come in here one at a time. Like, maybe he is just hoping to absorb the ammo, because he is pretty much out. He has already got to be out of ammo here. I swear some of these guys have to be just showing swords at this point. Or he's holding the ammo so that they do waste all their ammo on him. Uh, not really sure, but I mean, 209 kills, I'm going to say that they... They're probably pretty close to out of ammo, if not fully out of ammo. But like I said, they are going to be able to force their way through this this side of the map. And Swaby's got this side on lockdown. There's no way they're going to be pushing over here. Masesili has got right here. They could have a line of Thoros here, uh, especially with Egypt, but I still would not be giving them this location. Desert Cohort, 162 kills here. They are tired, though. Uh, definitely should be having some some kind of general unit with Second Wind up closer to this front line, giving that Second Wind out uh, as much as possible, especially as the defenders uh, versus the attackers. The attackers, you don't really have a choice in like having your general in a, in a good spot, but as the defenders, you could definitely be pushing any advantage you can get with like Second Wind, Battle Rhythm, what have you. Uh, and get him closer to the front line just to be able to proc that and then pull him back, you know, after you've proc'd it. I haven't seen Egypt's general anywhere yet, so. What we've got going on here, 106 kills, 101 kills. We'll just kind of zoom in over here. This is where all the action's kind of going on a little bit. And I'm going to take another sip of my coffee. Well, ooh, some nice Pila going into another desert cohort here. I think that's probably another Celtic? Yeah, probably another Celtic. I think that a sword follower. Got another desert legionary. 
Probably after the other ones. Yep. No, that's a, yeah, that's a, that is a legionary. So he's got the legionaries in the back line. I get it. The bonus armor plus the bonus melee defense probably better to have the other ones in the front line. Legionary supporting. Uh, that way, these units are either going to be exhausted, depleted, um, so you really don't have to bank on the extra melee defense you get from uh, <clears throat> the Desert Cohort plus the armor, absorbing more Pila and Arrow Fire. I do like the way that some silly a player is playing in general. Oof, Oathsworn versus Desert Legionaries. <clears throat> That's not going to go so well. That is not going to go well at all. Bringing in another unit of Desert Legionaries, hopefully. It's too late to do this now, because if he pulled back now, he'd lose half his unit. But uh, it would be nice to see a kill box here. Uh, he does have a ton of archers here, which could really come in handy. Doing, again, the whole uh, pulling out thing and then charging back in. Getting a nice charge in the back line here, chasing down some units. Now they are able to set up that kill box, though. Uh, since they pulled the old sworn back, very nice timing on this Massilia player's part. I do have to say I really, really like the way this Massilia player is playing. And we've got 20 men left in this desert cohort, and it's going to rout, and it has 132 kills. Not too bad. Not too bad. Not the greatest, but not bad. Uh, I would like to see them get more kills, but I mean, they are the frontline unit, so you can't really expect that to happen. Now, if he took a gen or an elephant general on top of everything else, I'd be even more impressed. But uh, I think he was going for the saving the money route and holding the line. And the archers have come back in here with the Persian light archers, just hammering that Cretan archer. But again, wasting ammo on a unit that is completely depleted of ammo. It's got his knives out. Uh, no reason to be doing that. 44 kills, 52 kills, but I think that was all on this unit here. Uh, so really just kind of wasting his ammo. Oh, no, no, he's going for the Nubians. Get those Nubians out, Egypt. Oh, no, did he take these Cretans, too? He must have hit these Cretans, too. Nice. And looks like we've got some more Nubian bowmen here doing an archer exchange, just taking out those Persian lights. Uh, yeah. Lucid here, not, uh, not doing the best. Uh, here we go again, winded unit here. Uh, it doesn't have very many men in it, so I don't know if I would be second winding it, but he does have a general here. Uh, could easily second wind it. Yeah, I, I'd probably second wind it at this point, unless there was a unit that I thought might get winded before. Ooh, no, this one right here. Definitely be second winding this one. You got your general right here, you might as well throw it on that. Or you've got Swaby's general right here, not really doing much of anything other than, you know, holding this flank. He, the units that are here need to be here, but this general could easily uh, inch up and throw his buffs down. Looks like they've already taken out that other Desert Legionary. I was not expecting that. I thought that that would have held longer. Especially with the kill box they had formed up here. Thorax Swordsman going in. Uh, finally seeing some action from uh, Egypt's melee troops here. Tribesmen going down quick. Yeah, did not not a good choice throwing those in right now. You really should have saved those for way later. Granted, they are going to absorb quite a bit of ammo or quite a few volleys, but that's I don't think that's going to be enough to change much here. Uh, Swaby definitely getting some good side shots in here, but like I said, they are going to be able to push up on this side pretty easily now, and they really don't have a choice but to fire into their face over here if they were to set up here. They could set up here and get some good side shots. Looks like they are doing that over here with the Cretan Archers. Not too bad. Um, would even be better if they were able to take the wall and get some back shots up here. Like, uh, get up on this section here, walk up over here, and block off this with a melee troop and just start pummeling them from, from the side here. Like we got some Thorax Swords. Oh, I was kind of expecting Cartley Axemen for a second. Oh, there we go. Heavy Numidians. Are they going in for the buff? Tell me they're going in for a buff. Don't tell me they're going into melee combat right now. You were doing so well, dude. Don't do it. Don't do it. No. Oh, no. Come on, bud. Don't do it. These are another melee troops. Er, uh, this is a skirmisher troop, so this is a ranged unit. 
Throwing into these Celtics and the Thorax Swordsman here actually could route quite a few of them, but uh, I was really hoping to see. Oh, there we go. There's the second wind, although I think that was on the wrong unit. Or it was a little late. It was one or the other. Did pick up some kills, not quite as many as I kind of expected him to pick up there. Hex Bears and Swordmasters coming in. Do we have some more Swordmasters? Good, good, good. Uh, a lot of people talk bad about the Swordmasters, but they're not that expensive. They're not the, the most expensive for those elite troops. And uh, they're definitely better than taking any sort of spear elite troop. Or not any, but most spear elite troops they're better than. <clears throat> so I, I very much support taking Swordmasters, especially a Swaby, where you can take... Uh, a bunch of low tier troops to compensate for uh, taking the high tier troops because they are they aren't the best high tier troops but because you can take club levy which are a really good low tier troop uh, it kind of offsets that so you're able to take even more of the sword masters even though they can't take on uh, other elite troops as easily I want to take a look at the Swaby build a little bit more here, see what else he's got going on. More Club Levy, Cambry Bowman, and some more Swordmasters, yeah. Pretty good. I, I'm liking the build so far from Swaby. Uh, Massilia, pretty good. Egypt, we haven't really seen too much of. A bunch of Thorax Swordsmen looks like sitting back here in the back line. Oof, two Glacian Royal Guard. You know what? For two factions that could have taken Elephant Generals for cheap. Um, I think that's something they really should have considered doing. And I'm a huge elephant player. I really love taking elephants. I think Egypt and Masasili, or Massilia should have probably thought about going that route. Uh, simply because it's not that expensive uh, for them to take that as a general. I mean, they do have the cheap general options. So we've got Kyrian Axemen and Heavy Nimming and Skirmishers. So they did go the cheap option for generals, probably to compensate uh, for the armies. But most generals have to take a uh, thousand, at least a thousand dollar general unit. So taking a one thousand six hundred dollar elephant unit as your general um, isn't a bad choice at all. Uh, so you can oftentimes get up to you can get up to like at least a thousand kills with them if you know what you're doing with them. Oftentimes that's not the case. You might you're probably more likely to get a hundred to three hundred, but still for that thousand six hundred that's a guaranteed hundred right there. If not the three hundred mark, and it could possibly just tip the game in your favor. Uh it's kind of a gamble, but if you know what you're doing, you should easily be able to make that mark. Uh but what they did isn't isn't bad either. Isn't bad either going the cheap route to be able to get more uh, bang for your buck for the rest of your army. Not a bad choice, but taking the Glacian Royal Guard, I don't think was the right choice for that, in my opinion. Uh, I've never been, I've, I've never had a good time taking high tier troops versus taking more medium tier troops uh, in mass, at least on defense. Especially when you're, you're doing so well with your archers uh, this whole game. I think they definitely could have uh, could have gone that route instead. A Kyrian Axeman here, probably trying to throw that Pila there. It's kind of hard to throw it over top of units, so they probably they should be trying to hit this unit here. Could have them on auto fire. Not really sure what's going on here. They also have Swordmasters in the fight here. Ninety nine kills already with those Swordmasters. Over here we've got these Swordmasters. Twenty eight zero, and just kind of reforming the line, getting that Pila off. Attackers look like they're actually kind of starting to run out of units. The balance of power is still fairly even, and actually I think it was in the uh, attacker's favor a lot more than it is now. Run, Make Both teams playing fairly well. And let's see what we've got left out here. Old Sworn, Old Sworn. Sword followers. That is a lot of old sworn, and this is where again I will push the whole elephant thing. Um, if they have a ton of old swarm spam or just a ton of melee spam in general, 
and which is a lot of the time what people will do uh they'll take the high tier Ulsworn or Glacian Royal Guard or whatever what have you but they do not hold up to elephants at all so in the late game when all they have left is some Ulsworn and they're out of their archers maybe you stuck your general unit back here somewhere I'm not ta I'm not telling you to take an elephant flat out I'm saying if you can take it as a general so that means uh when it's cheap don't take it as Bactria or Seleucid or something like that because those ones are stupid expensive but taking it as Kush, Carthage, Egypt, Sicily, uh, I think that's all of them. There might be one more that I'm missing. But those ones, you can take it for 1,600 as your general unit. Take it if you can take it. Oof. Nice back shots into these sword followers. Those guys are going to be crumbling pretty quick here. Uh, at this point in the game, though, I'd definitely be saving my ammo for those Old Sworn. They're going to have a hard time dealing with that. I mean, they do have some more Sword Masters here. They do have some Blood Sworn. Um, but I don't think these guys are tiered up at all, are they? No. Non tiered Blood Sworn, I don't think are going to be hacking it against those Old Sworn when they come in. The Old Sworn are going to cleave through pretty much everything. They're going to have to set up some really heavy uh, kill boxes here. Uh, to really take out all those old sworn, really hope that they don't have to deal with too many archers at the end of this here. And looking like Seleucid has quite a few archers left with ammo. Actually, most of the attackers seem to have a ton of ammo left. Getting some nice Pila off from those Cartley Axemen now. Might be getting some friendly fire in there though on these Swordmasters. Getting hit in the side here as well. Thorax Swordsman hitting this unit. This unit is, a, ooh, that's an Oathsworn unit. Yeah, definitely worth it. Definitely worth it there. But they are definitely also getting some friendly fire in here on these uh, Thorax Swordsmen. But I, I think I would definitely risk that to take out an Oathsworn. And they do still have the Scorpion. 93 kills on the Scorpion. I haven't even seen this thing firing. It's not even facing the right way. Maybe he has it on auto fire, so he switched it to this direction. But uh, I am, uh, I'm assuming that this thing still has to have ammo left. You can get up to 200 kills, a scorpion, and he could even inch it up a little further if he wanted to. But I, I could probably I definitely want to be saving that for those old sworn. This is kind of where the strength of the scorpion comes in. Uh, you save it until the late game, uh, unlike the stuff you have on the walls. Uh, if you pick a scorpion on defense. You're able to save it till the late game, use it on those high tier troops. Very nice, very nice. Do do really love them, seeing that. I'm hoping that that's what he did. I hope he has plenty of ammo left, um, but I I don't know. He could he could be out because from a long range, you might not pick up that 200. Might not, but I think he probably still has ammo left. Like they're going to be inching on down this wall. And they've got no melee troops blocking off this side. They definitely needed something over there. What do we got coming up? Club Levy and Bloodsworn. Uh, they could do some damage on the wall there. I think one of them doesn't have a huge charge. I'd definitely be sticking the Club Levy up on the wall. And taking the Bloodsworn and getting ready to charge here. Got some Thorax Swordsman coming in as well. Thorax Swordsman could go up on the wall as well. Club Levy coming in to pinch them off, hold them on the wall a little bit longer. Are they going to try to get some Pila off? Or is this one already... No, this one still should have Pila. Hopefully it's not an auto-fire, because it'll just fire up at that wall. They're going to charge the wall. You got this, guys. Good job. Oh, they're pinched up here. How did that happen? They're pinched on both sides. I thought that that unit was Seleucids. Okay. Yeah, that Celtic warrior is gone. Okay. That Osworn getting shot in the side. 85 kills though. They really need to set up another kill box. Like from this side and this side.
and getting some nice peel off in that old sworn is I mean he is using his his thorax swordsman really well I do have to say that like he he saved them for the late game still has all that peel left to take out some old sworn just annihilating that unit right now oof that guy's got like 12, 12 spears in his shield. He's, he's good. He's just a porcupine now. That Osworn is winded as well. He Yeah, I would definitely be pushing my advantage here. I mean, he can continue to use Pila. I, I, I almost saved the Pila at this point. If that unit is pretty much exhausted, uh, you've already got it dead. It, it, it's good as gone. Going in some more Thorax Swordsmen. Silver Shield Swordsmen coming up now too. And another unit of Osworn. Just kind of piling in those elite units on this side. They know they can't really push this side. They're just going to continue piling everything in through this direction here. Still getting some good side and back shots coming in from these archers here. Still, I'd definitely be saving that ammo though. Definitely be saving as much ammo as possible for all those Oathsworn that are coming in. Cause let's let's see what we've got left outside. Another Oathsworn still outside. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. There is one, two, three. Count that four, five. Six, seven, seven, mm, and I'm just counting the Silver Shield Swordsman as this one at this point. But seven of those elite cheer troops still to come into the battle. So they have left here Glacian Royal Guard still, and then I think this is another Glacian Royal Guard. Yeah, that's two elite troops in the back here. They still have the Swordmasters. Desert Cohort still holding the center line, which I think they're easily going to be able to... They could almost push the center line at this point, uh, unless they're worried about the Osworn coming up. Wait, we got two more Silver Shields. Oof, that's... Or is that ones I've already counted? I'm going to have to double check. One, two, three... Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, ten. Oh, my God. Okay, never mind. Ouch. Ouch. Ten elite troops. Um, I'm gonna say that the defenders don't have much of a chance at this point, especially because they have to keep wasting their ammo on uh, weaker troops. They really don't have to. They could really hold on to most of this ammo. They should be able to win out the melee fight in most of these situations here. But uh, it's not looking good. Is not looking good at all. Even if they were to set up the kill box at this point, if this, if all we can see here is all the defenders have left, I don't think they have a chance. Um, do they still have the hex bearer though? If they still have that hex bearer, they could offset it a little bit. I don't see it though. I really hope they didn't throw the hex bearer in there. Oh, here we go. We found the hex bear. All right, so they do still have the hex bear, but offset it a little bit. And with the kill boxes, maybe. And if they have plenty of archer ammo left, but 152 kills here, 106. This one's still full. Okay, okay. We still got one full. The hackers still have pretty much full ammo. And over here, 103. Can't see what that one had. Not, not looking good for the defenders at all. Ooh, they're actually going to continue pushing up the center line now? Okay. It's almost too bad the defenders didn't take calf. Like, if the defenders had any calf, I have no doubt they would have been able to take out at least two, two of these archers uh, that the attackers have. At least at this point in the game, there's nothing out there defending these archers. Um, zero, zero. Like, they do have the Silver Shield Swordsman here and the Oathsworn, but 
you can easily get around that sacrificing a unit to get one of those and try it with the club levy. Hopefully they're busy micromanaging and they, they don't notice. Oh, no, they noticed. They seen him. Dang. Say, that would have been really nice. And now that uh, they were saving all that ammo for Swaby too, now that uh, Swaby is really the only one left with a, a decent amount of units, they can just go ahead and throw all that ammo at them. At this point, I might even consider pulling back. Um, maybe pull back to here, hold the smaller choke point, pull back to here, hold in a smaller choke point, or even further than that. Actually, no. No, pulling back on this side wouldn't be great. They would still have to hold this area, so maybe like pull back to here, and here, and here. Uh, so you only have to cover those areas, and they can't get angles on you with those archers. Like, they could still potentially outside here, but... They would still be covering the same amount of area they already have to cover. I think it's going to give them a little bit more protection. They could even pull back to this point if they felt like they could win an archer fight right here. Oof. Blue's are coming in with those archers now, getting the archers on the flank here. There is no chance that they hold this section with those archers sitting there. They push them up at all. Really push them up to here. I think they'll have the range to hit the Bloodsworn. Oryx Swordsman piling on Silver Shields, Glacian Ga Royal Guard piling in here too. Old Sworn and Silver Shields. Not looking good, bud. Not looking good. And they didn't set up the kill box. They pushed up. Over here, we've got some Silver Shields coming in, Old Sworn coming in. Another old sworn come in, they're just piling in the center at this point. You know, Swaby does have sword masters up here, they do have the uh, hex bears, they have and Nimidians, not meh. More sword masters. We need some of those fear units in here, though. We need some. I don't think they got any besides the hex bears. Um, did the, the blood sworn, I think, might actually have a scare if I remember correctly. Thought they did. I think they do. Yeah, I think they do. Warriors, move out! Run, cash you! Get running! And that Oathsworn is almost gone already. What is going on to this Oathsworn? Uh, bringing in another Oathsworn. They're going to try to get the Oathsworn because they were originally targeting that. And that's going to cause them to lose quite a few Swordmasters here. Uh, it's kind of a dirty trick, in my opinion. I'm not a huge fan of, fan of that, but it is something you have to pay attention to with your micro. Bloodsworn coming in on this side. Really should just hold here and here. Not even here. I, I honestly, I just pull back to here and here because uh, there's no way you can avoid getting shot in the back at this point with them being able to just pile in their archers now. Definitely want to just pull back to this choke point and this choke point. And then over here, whatever you have to do, you're just going to have to adjust. But then they probably push this side. And maybe you can hold here and here. I don't know. Oh, they still have to probably try to hold here. But uh, I think in the long run, with them breaking open right here, this is a losing battle, regardless. Silver Shields, 130. 166. Oof, he threw in this Numidian skirmish. Like, they're not bad in melee combat, but that's your general, man. Is he dead? No, he's not dead. Why did you do that? They, they have to be really depleted here for him to have thrown that in. Getting some nice back shots into the Silver Shields. 132 kills here. Does he still have... Yeah, 155. Nice. So he did save that. 
Looks like it is still in the defender's favor again here. Um, facing his units towards the archer fire. Good choice there. They're going to use a ton of their ammo on this uh, Thorax Swordsman. And Silver Shield and Ulsworn over on this side. For here, we've still got one. Just one. What happened to the ten? They had ten. Did they really lose them that fast? Wow. Wow. They have five, I think. No, four. Four elite troops left. Unless there's something somewhere else that I'm just not seeing, but four elite troops left for the attackers. That's it. Defenders just doing a really good job here. I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. Oof, that heavy, heavy Numidian skirmisher though. Really should not have had him that close to the front line. He's got to be dead by now. Let's see, casualties sustained. I don't see General dead yet. Gonna happen any second though. He's trying to like just uh, throw him around everywhere it looks like to try to absorb a ton of that ammo. Maybe that's the idea here. Dodge a bunch of it. Still really risky play, dude. Really risky play. Now, what do they have left? Galatian Royal Guard. They have one Galatian Royal Guard back here. Another one over here. 116 kills. Looks like they're taking out Seleucid's archers, which are going to be pretty depleted at that point since they are missing so many men, so they, they can't really pick up that many kills. Thorax Swordsman, 80... And getting some nice Pila from the Glacians and Ulsworn versus Glacian Royal Guard. Now this is an exchange that the uh, I actually don't know who wins in this matchup. I would assume the Glacian Royal Guard wins this matchup, but uh, the Ulsworn did go into Shield Wall. It does not look like. Ooh, they activated Battle Rhythm and that, so yeah, the uh, Galatian Royal Guard should win this exchange. But they could also form up into Shield Wall too and get that bonus as well. Uh, it does kind of hinder their killing potential though. But uh, it might not be a bad idea because that is exactly what the Ulsworn is doing right now. And these are being worn off. Got these Swordmasters in on this side now. As the defenders at this point in the game, I would probably try to push my advantage as much as possible. Kill this unit, box it in. Oh wait, that's the wrong unit, wrong unit. Never mind. I guess you're not boxing anything in. I'd definitely be trying to force the fight here at this point though. Because uh, they do have plenty of archers left, which is really what's going to change the game here. So you really have to try to get into those archers, even taking these guys, circling them around, getting melee combat with your archers into their archers. Really close, but I do think the attackers still have the upper hand here with those archers. And there we go, it's ticking back in their favor. Going to be a really close match though. Uh, oof. Heavy Numinians, the only thing that's left here. Thorax Swordsman, you have to block this. Come on bud, move. Move. Oh wait, oh wait, that's theirs. Never mind. I'm dumb. I'm dumb. Don't listen to me. Keep mi I keep mixing these two up. Not have to block anything. He's good. So they are pushing the advantage though. Well, as much of an advantage as they have. Oh no! Why did you throw the? Th Why? He, he probably did it because he was under arrow fire and was going to lose the unit regardless, but still, it's a huge penalty there. Correct, Swordsman 120. 
I don't know, I'd be taking this Thorax Swordsman around. It looks like he's going to be doing that with the Glacian Royal Guard instead, but I think they're going to need more in the center line here. I mean, on this side, you've got the Cartley Axeman to back it up. Although, the arrow fire from the Celtics. Ooh, nice. Nice, Club Levy getting up on that wall, taking out the Celtic Bowman. Nice. Ah, oh, they noticed. And they were able to actually pause their unit to react. Uh, usually everything glitches out on the wall. Over here, Thorax Swordsman losing to Thor or Osworn. It's gonna be getting the Glacian Royal Guard here. Definitely, definitely want these. Oh, no, he's gonna be taking the Kyrian Axemen. Okay, interesting. Over here, taking the... Thorax? Yeah, he is taking the Thorax around too, okay. But I thought he should have been doing. No! <laughs> Trying to charge through the center. Oh no, he got into some archers. Nice, very nice. Uh, getting some Thorax Swordsman here. Very close battle, but uh, I think the defenders might actually pull off the win here. There is still one Ulsworn left. Swordmasters. Yeah. Wow. Just wow. I can't believe it. There still has to be plenty of ammo left on the attacker's side, though. There's no way the balance of power should be this close. Silver Shield's getting back over here into these Numidian Bowmen. Are all these guys out of ammo? They are. What are you doing? Oh, getting that Pila. All right, all right. Pila off. Could go for a ooh, nice charge getting in there, taking out these Silver Shields. Should be able to get this around here now with these two units. Are these out of ammo as well? Yep. Hit them in the back, hit them in the front, they're exhausted. Should be able to take them out. What happened? The, they got must have routed. That kind of sucks. They still should be able to take this unit out if they got a surround on it. 23 guys left. I'd definitely be taking that if I could. Uh, they could go for the capture, though, if they can sneak through here with these Gallic Hunters. Osworn, 51 kills. C7, Green Axeman coming in, too. Let me close. Oh no, Swordmaster exhausted. What? What? Oh, wonder what they went. No, that's it. That is it for this unit. Over here, we still have the Glacian Royal Guard, though. One of the last units here that can hold up to these Oathsworn. And do they have a second unit of Oathsworn still here? Yep, they have two units of Oathsworn still in the game. They've taken their ballista down from the wall to charge into the fight. Honestly, I'd just be charging that into some of these archers. And over here we've got the Cambry, or Cambry Bowwoman engaging with the Gallic Hunters. I always like watching the archer fights for some reason. And they have spears. I think they have the I think they have the advantage as far as stats are concerned. I could double check that. The uh, Cambry Bowwoman. Melee attack 32. Oh yeah. Yeah, they definitely do. Cambry Bowwoman. Uh, in melee combat, pretty dang good versus other archers. And we've got the Camry Bowman coming into the main fight here. Don't know that I would be doing that necessarily, but I mean, like getting the rear uh, on these Osworn definitely could help. Looks like the attackers are actually losing the balance of power drastically at this point in the game, and I mean, they do have a full Thorax Swordsman sitting in the back here. It's just the two Osworn, I think, that are left with the attackers. Yeah, pretty much. That is pretty much all that you see. Very close match. I still... I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely over. There is no way the attackers come out on top. 
at this point. I was gonna say if those if those two oath sworn units still had another thirty guys apiece, they could potentially pull off the win, but they would have to be in a different position. But that was a good match. I was surprised he sent in a, a losing one if that was the side it came from. Uh, but it was a really good match. Let's take a look at what we got here. All right, so he did send in a losing one. Kudos to him for doing that. But he did very well. Not really surprising that he did very well because he had all these freaking Oathsworn. That's kind of ridiculous. Uh, I do think that this one very much underperformed, though. Um, should have been expecting to get another... Uh, 100 kills out of that, or up to 100 kills. You should really expect to get, or want to get, at least 200 kills per Oathsworn. But if you round them all out, I think you're going to see that he definitely got his money's worth out of all the Oathsworn altogether. Uh, got his money's worth, money, yeah, got his money worth out of the uh, Gallic Hunters as well. And I think he did the same thing with the Celtic Warriors. Granted, I am not a huge fan of not taking a full 20 stack, uh, but he did do very well. I mean, he scored the top for his team, so I can't really say anything to that. Uh, let's see what else we got going on here. We've got uh, Bloody Stranger here, and there's really no, like, they all tack together, so there's no, like, this guy versus that guy kind of deal going on this time. Um, so let's see what we've got going on here. He did pretty dang well with the Celtic Bowman overall. I mean, didn't do great with this one, but uh, for 125 range unit, he did pretty dang good. Very much underperformed with this Oathsworn unit, though. And let's see, Celtics, eh, they could have done better. But I mean, I think for the most part, they were sent in as cannon fodder. I'm not a huge fan of doing that in general. But under the circumstances of this battle, it wasn't a bad choice at all. And let's see what we've got going on here. Some Oathsworn, let's see. 138 kills. They didn't do amazing. They could have done a lot better. Definitely could have done a lot better. Like he's got his money's worth between the two of them. He's got 200, but he should have gotten probably closer to 400 between the two. And then the sword followers. I think the sword followers kind of underperformed, but they all. I think you could probably expect 100 kills out of a sword follower. So they all kind of roughly got in that area if you round them out. Um, maybe a little bit shy. Maybe a little bit over. Uh, kind of hard to judge right now. Let's see, yeah, they might be a little bit. They might be dead on, honestly. And eighteen ninety, not too bad. Anything above fifteen is usually pretty good. Uh, Two thousand is great in my mind, anyways. And then we've got Willow here. Now his job was to push up those tortoises right away with those hillmen. Um, so he did his job there. And the rest of these guys, kind of cannon fodder. That's kind of what they were there for. He was going to be the first guy in. Uh, again, though, I'm a much bigger fan of quantity over quality. So I think he could have probably taken one less silver shield and spammed out some more uh, Thorax Swordsmen or something. Um, especially since I don't... These are kind of the same thing with Oathsworn. These three uh, didn't perform that well as a group. I mean, if you factor in the general, I think that these two... Uh, definitely hit their mark, but these two just completely underperformed. You should have gotten at least another 100 kills between these two. Um, so, I mean, he could have easily just gone with another two Thorax Swords and picked up 50 kills each or something uh, at the very at the very least. Um, on top of that, I think this is what kind of decided the game. Wasn't the fact that everybody went with these high-tier armies, and... I. I keep saying this over and over again. Don't throw your units away. Those hillmen did not need to go into combat. If those four hillmen sat in the back and didn't just throw themselves away, those four hillmen could have supported at the end of that game and stopped any surrounds happening on those Oathsworn, at least for a time. And they could have possibly pulled off the win there on that front line had those two Oathsworn that Hermes had left... Uh, been able to just cleave through whatever was left there because I mean they went out to sword masters they went out to whatever else was left there aside from the Galatians from Sheriff here I'm not a fan of Galatian Royal Guard to be honest because like you have the Silver Shields as a, as a different or not a better option but a cheaper option um, where they're pretty similarly stat anyways 
Uh, never mind going off on tangents there. We'll go into the defender's comp. The Swaby player getting a ridiculous amount of kills on Camry Bowman. Now, I don't think a lot of that was the uh, range play that they did. A lot of that was just uh, at the end getting into the melee combat with the uh, other archer units. But, I mean, quite a few of that. I'm going to say probably about that, probably 150 each, was probably at least on the back shots that they were getting and just the archer play in general. Very nice play with the archers here. I really loved seeing that scorpion. Definitely a huge fan of that. Uh, wow. Not a huge fan of your name, but okay. Uh, and he's outscoring most of the other players' elite units with sword masters. Uh, definitely had to give this guy some kudos here. A uh, little... Not doing so great with the club levy, but I mean, club levy, they're 200. What do you expect? Uh, out of them, really. Uh, Bloodsworn, I think, could have done a little better than the Hex Bears. You know, they're not there to get kills. They're there to, you know, use their buffs, debuffs. But 2,800 kills with Swaby on defense. It's not really unheard of, but I mean, like, that is really impressive uh, to get 2,800 uh, for one player. Uh, granted, he was the last one into the fight, so he was kind of the cleanup crew. And then we've got Sheriff here with the Egyptian infantry. Again, these guys always getting these armies with the high tier units and not taking, uh, not taking the full twenty stack drives me insane. I, I get it. Like it can be good, but and it really can be good if you're playing with some pe people you know. Which I think I know I've played with Sheriff and and uh, before, and I think I've played with Moldy here, but I don't remember uh, Poppy here. I think this was probably an in-house game, though. But, uh, yeah, definitely performed very well with his archers. Thorax Swordsman, eh, not so much. But, I mean, like, they, they entered the battle in kind of in the mid, middle of the fight there. Not, like, uh, super late, but I feel like they could have performed a little better. I think a lot of the things he had problems with was just not forming up kill boxes. Could have. He did get some. You get some, but I think a lot of it was just uh, uh, trying to micromanage at the same time. I'm not a huge fan of taking Galatian Railguard, but the kills that they did get were on Ulsworn for the most part. So he saved them for the right point in the game uh, when he definitely needed them. Uh, these guys, I think, were just to guard the artillery piece, but 48 kills. Egyptian Infantry, $200 unit. Not bad, not bad at all. 142 on the Carrion Axeman. Pretty good there as well. Um... Still think I would have gone with an elephant, though. Just my opinion. But uh, rather than taking the Glacian Royal Guard units, but definitely use them where they needed to be. Can't really say much more than that. So even though they only got 130 kills between the two of them, um, they, they did their job 100% there. Normally you want to see at least 200 again to... Probably more on the Glacians because they're so expensive in comparison to most other elite troops. Um, I personally think I would go a tier below the Glacian Rail Guard and go with like the. I think they have the Silver Shield as an option, uh, and their their stats aren't that different and save a little bit of money there. But that's my opinion because I always try to get that full twenty stack. Anyways, we're gonna move on to the next one. But he got eighteen forty seven. Not too shabby there. Right about the mark. You want to hit. Anywhere between 15 and 20, great mark. Uh, on average, you're going to see people hit around 1,750, somewhere in there. And that's probably the, the middle mark where you, where you can really judge, the, judge what's going on there. And he did only take two range units. I think he could have taken some more, but I mean, like, I get what he was doing. But at the same time... Minion skirmishers, not not, not the minion skirmishers, but the uh, the gorilla ones. Uh, I don't I forget what they're called exactly, but they're not a bad unit. Really good in melee combat. I I would have probably just gone for a full twenty stack with those rather than taking the desert legionaries. But that's my opinion. I could be completely wrong on that. But uh, could have probably taken those and maybe gotten one more desert cohort instead. Because uh, they just hold out way better, but I mean, you can't really object to what he did, because I mean, he did get past the 15 mark, and he was the front line, and still managed to get the 
past the 15 mark in that game. So definitely performed very well and still managed to get uh, 2, 255 on that Desert Cohort unit. Uh, overall, these guys, I think you could probably sell them a little shorter than like elite units because they're not quite there. But they are uh, they're basically elites. Um, they don't cost the uh, they don't cost the same as most elite units. So getting anywhere from like 150 up to 200, that's pretty good for those units. I'd, I'd have to say. And I mean, he did do some cleanup work here with the Desert Legionaries. Uh, the tribes when he kind of threw in and they got destroyed. I don't think there was much reason for him to throw those in so soon. Uh, or maybe he could have thrown them in somewhere where he knew the archers weren't. But yeah, did very well and did really good with his heavy Numidian skirmishers. I do have to say that. Although I think he did sacrifice them a little bit early there um, with getting them into that archer fire. That's it for today. That was a great replay. I do have to compliment Hermes on sending that one in. Uh, one, because it was a losing one, and two, uh, because it was just a really good battle. Uh, did really like that one. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.